I want to tell you a little bit about your nervous system and how that works. And I want to use a metaphor which I call the bucket of resilience. Now, when you start developing as a fetus inside the belly of your mother, already after 22 to 26 weeks, you can be conditioned. And you have a nervous system. You don't have cognition yet and everything, but you can tell light and darkness and sounds, and you can notice your mom's nervous system alert levels. So, what you have is like a bucket. The same kind of bucket that you would use to collect rainwater or the one you would have in a boat if it starts raining and you want the water, you know, to go out of the boat. So this is your bucket of resilience and stress in any shape or form is like rain filling that bucket. Now, as the bucket fills up, your stress levels rise. Your resilience is the distance from where your stress level is right now up to the top. Stress levels go up in a day for different reasons. It could be good, it could be bad, it just goes up. The idea is that at night, when you sleep, the bucket is emptied. So a good night's sleep will lower your stress levels, so you wake up fine and preserved. If you have a bad night's sleep and you don't get the rest you need, you will wake up with your bucket full to one third or maybe half full. Maybe you sleep in a way that your bucket never really empties. That means you have a base tension, which is that. All right, so as the bucket fills up with stress, what will happen is that when you come really close to overflowing, you'll start noticing that your bucket is full because your resilience is less. You will react to things that normally don't disturb you a little bit more than the situation calls for. You spill coffee on your pants, you don't go, spilled some coffee on my pants, you go, I spilled coffee on my pants and it's somebody else's fault. That's what happens up here. Also, you start getting physical symptoms because it's been filled for a while. You start getting headaches. You start getting indigestion. Your nervous system is fired up. Now, when your bucket fills over the sides, that's when you can have a panic reaction or you could go into apathy. You wake up in the morning and you can't get out of bed. You're just lying there thinking, I should get out, but I can't. That is a fight and flight response. It's a freeze response that kicks in because your bucket is full. Your system says, don't do anything, don't move, don't even think about it until we get this bucket emptied. Now, this is the everyday stress that can fill up and reasons why it doesn't empty could be that the stress is bigger than your relaxation or that when you sleep, you're actually not rejuvenating properly. But there's another fact that can fill the bucket really fast and works in a different way. This is when something happens, anything, that fills your bucket all the way up in an instant. That kind of experience is called traumatic. Now, if your bucket is empty, a traumatic experience is quite big. It takes a lot to perturb you. But if your bucket is half full, a smaller experience could fill it all so that it overflows. Traumatic experience is an experience where something of value to you, your integrity, your safety, your personal, your prestige, something is at risk of being lost. Also, there is no escape. Also, the no escape can be something you perceive. It doesn't have to be for real. Now, we have a lovely nervous system and it's there to protect us. There's nothing wrong with what happens next, but it does create some issues. Because if there is a traumatic experience, let's say already in the belly of your mother, your mother walks out into the street and the car goes meep. She gets really agitated and jumps up on the sidewalk. Her nervous system goes boom, 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 boom. Inside the fetus registers noise, meep. Life danger, right? So that noise is registered into your nervous system as a button. 
and that button is there to save your life once you're born. The way it works is, this is a conditioning that is potentiated into your nervous system in the amygdala. Now, the mother maybe realizes, well, it wasn't so bad, and walks on and forgets about it. But the child is born, and at a later point in life, at around 10 years maybe, the child walks out into the street, everything has been fine, and all of a sudden, a car honks with that exact same noise, going, meep. And all of a sudden, the child gets really scared and cold sweaty and heart starts beating and thinks, my God, I'm having a panic reaction for nothing. I must be broken. No, it's a conditioning that was made prenatally. And I'm saying this just so you understand that conditioning can happen from week 22 to 26. And then it goes on the rest of your life. That experience in itself can be a new traumatic experience. And Everything that happens when we have a traumatic experience gets these buttons. They're called triggers, right? So uh, the triggers are coded in our senses. One trigger could be noise. It could be smell. It could be visual information. And that information is coded in three categories, right? So category one, immediately recognizable threats, right? If you see a big dog coming towards you, immediately recognizable threat, if it's a threatening dog. So the visual of a big threatening dog, is coded as one button. And that's one category of information, coded in all senses, the smell, the look, the feel, the sound. But then there are two other categories of information, and this is why it's good to understand. It's also coded stuff that just happened to be around at the time. There was a big dog, and it was midday, and the sun was shining. And I could clearly smell the green grass. This information is co-coded. And then there's a third kind of information, which is... Uh, there were no people around me. the context. It was outdoor, it was indoor. So specific information and general information and threatening information. Now the nervous system codes this so that when enough of these are checked off in the future by your sub-radar, subconscious nervous system, it will trigger a life and death reaction similar to the one that you experienced before. That's called post-traumatic stress. And post-traumatic stress can listen just to your imagination. So, if you smell the grass, have the same sun, there's no people, and you imagine there's a dog, your nervous system will act as if that was a real truth, not a fantasy. Which means that it's a conditioned reaction to certain stimuli that will trigger a traumatic response, but you may have no idea what it's about, because there was no dog around. Now, the reason this is good to understand is that what can be conditioned can be deconditioned. Right? So when you decondition something in the nervous system or depotentiate, it means that if you activate the circuits of this checklist, the checklist going dogs, including grass, including sun, including no people, including a sound, if you can calm the nervous system down while this circuit is active, it's basically like an alarm in a car that starts and triggers for reasons you don't know, and then you just fine-tune it zoop, until it turns off, which means you can notice all these things, but the emotional response doesn't happen anymore. Then you've depotentiated the traumatic reaction, and it won't trigger anymore. And basically, you could compare it, actually, to a guitar. I use this metaphor because when you have tension in your body, the, the tone of emotion can be fired. And if you loosen the tension in your body so much that the string is completely loose, then when you hit the string, there will be no tone, there's no emotional response. So basically, when your nervous system is relaxed, mentally and physically, you don't get the emotional response. So most of the depotentiation process is actually just accessing that neurological circuit 
and relaxing. And there are many techniques for that. One of them is topping. One of them is havening. One of them is deep relaxation, medication, music, laughter, joking. Something that stabilizes you will untrigger that response. So to sum it up, we have a bucket of resilience that fills up with daily stress. If we don't sleep or don't sleep and rest as we sleep, it will fill up. In three days, most people can experience a burnout or a psychotic experience because the bucket is simply full for lack of sleep. If you relax properly, it empties out. There's not a worry. You don't know if it's full because you will notice that it's filling up because you react more than you should. You overreact emotionally to things. A traumatic experience will fill it up immediately and even anything that reminds you of something around that experience can trigger that traumatic response at a later point in life. I hope this has been useful. Check out those techniques.